My name is Istok Zavreznik. I come from company Linal and I'm a BIM manager and the project leader at that company. I will mm, try to show uh, what impact uh, when using BIM uh, had uh, or when trying to lead the project or manage the project. Uh, the project is um, four kilometer long uh, um, rail track uh, from uh, in from Maribor to Chantil. Uh, my presentation will be from uh, put it together from from four uh, points: basic information about the project, then the meaning of the of BIM modeling on the project, project management with BIM support, of course, the main topic of today. And I will just at the end I will just address a little about 4D modeling and construction scheduling. If we are talking. <laughs> ha, it's okay now. <laughs> this is the video should go now. <coughs> now I understand what the problems are. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is the the uh, 3D model of the design. It goes from Maribor and uh, right now the track will go into the tunnel. Uh, here you can see uh, the existing track goes left and the new one is on the right. Uh, the, the tunnel is approximately one and a half kilometer long and then on, of course it has a service tunnel from the right side which ends on the end of the existing tunnel and on the north side from tunnel it goes directly to the, on the viaduct and which is approximately one kilometer long and then goes to the end and uh, again on the existing track um, it's a i would say small project if if, if we look at the comparison from the china <laughs> presentation from the beginning but in slovenia term it's not so small project uh, if we just go to the uh, saying a few words about the project, uh, this corridor is part of the Pan-European Corridor 10. Uh, our part is there, a little small little part, which is one part of the railway, which is not two, two track yet. So it's a small part, but really important for Slovenia. Um, the face of the project was detailed design, subscriber was Ministry of for Infrastructure of Republic of Slovenia, investment grade at the beginning was 76 million, now uh, it's about 100. Uh, contractor, there were four contractors, or we are, Lineal, Irgo, Ponting and Delea, uh, Lineal is leading partner, partner and more than 10 subcontractors. Uh, which means that there were approximately 18 companies that worked on that project. Uh, maybe if we go into the detail, the video was from that point to the red point. Uh, this is the existing tunnel and this is the new one. Of course, the complete reconstruction of track is from Maribor to Chantil, which is 17 kilometers long, but this only this part is, uh, is on the new... Um, is new track. So maybe a quick overview of the objects, four kilometers of railway track, 1.5 kilometer tunnel, 0 0.25 kilometer service tunnel, uh, a little less than one kilometer long viaduct, eight roads, five service facilities, nine support structures, and one underpass. Maybe a word about support structures, their w walls are 400 meters or something long. So. It's not a lot of them, but they are long. Uh, we talked about that before. Pr uh, challenge. I would stop here. Uh, 
if we want to chop wood, we need hardware, software, and then, of course, we need to put all that wood to, together. If hardware is X, then I think we don't have any problems with hardware. If wood is software, it's like that. Uh, so wood can be really straight with no knots, nothing is firm, but it can also have knots or everything is uh, everything can be spiraled. It's the same is, is, is with software and the same is with knowledge about BIM on the, I would say, general use. So, but client doesn't care. He just, he just want to have nice pile of wood on the end. Uh, of course, that was challenge because uh, uh, when you need to have, when you want to comply these four points, which is open beam approach, then uh, beam approach to design, first used in the field of railway infrastructure in Slovenia. That the, that's that was that is or is the second project, second public infrastructure project in Slovenia, which was in which BIM was used. Uh, then a rigid track was, uh, was from start of the tunnel to the end of the viaduct. Uh, and of course, production needed to be uh, created so that the transportability of existing track w wouldn't be, uh, or is it possible through the construction. If, if we talk about BIM approach, this picture is really nice. Everybody is looking in the same uh, direction. Well, it's not that in real life. It's not like that in real life. Actually, it's like that. Uh, in, in the start of that project, uh, there were 40 or 50 designers included. Uh, and uh, for a lot of them, it was, BIM was at start of their way. So we were really struggling how to how to put the knowledge to them, how to, how to make them look at the same picture uh, and, and see the same uh, content, of course. Uh, if you look at the organization of the project, that's why we created uh, first two different approaches. One is for the tunnel and one is, one is for the open track. And then every company had his own coordinator, beam coordinator, which was that was the main purpose of that was not only to to uh, to make co coordination for the complete project but also to spread knowledge uh, we were we were having meetings uh, i don't know every week or every 14 days uh, where, where we were explaining to them and they were explaining to the designers in the company because the, so that the knowledge was 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 going on uh, if we are talking about the companies, this is the main companies and of course the software that was used. Uh, the main problem was that the open approach was needed. So how to connect Revit and Alplan? It's everything is perfect. We have IFC, yeah, that's okay, but if you if you if you export export from Revit and want to import to Alplan, it's not uh, it's not so perfect. If you have uh, one combined BIM software to just to look at the models, it's okay. But still, you need to have uh, the right uh, attributes, everything. And for infrastructure projects, none of that is really is it's so structured. Then. Later, uh, uh, before in the in the start of the was specially said something about common data environment. This was the I think the bigger point of the of the of the complete project. Uh, we had to create. We were using Alfresco, uh, but so the software or common data environment is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is how to create the system all the data naming, uh, conventions, where to put data, who should put that data, how, the, how in which formats, how they will be uh, consistent, what would be inside. It's uh, not so easy. Then um, I, I, I need to mention one project. This is uh, BIM Server. R right now we are in the stage of implementing BIM Server in, onto the Alfresco so that we will have uh, 
complete we 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 can see IFCs on the, the on our uh, CDE. Of course, every 14 day, the our designers had to upload their IFCs. Okay, five minutes. That means that we had to check every every 14 days these IFCs and look at them and uh, and said to them they they are not perfect and everything. <laughs> so uh, it was a struggle. Um, Attribute tables, together with the engineer uh, of the project, we were, I can s maybe combining these attributes for half year, but r right now I can say that it, they are not perfect. They don't have, sometimes they have too much data or sometimes they don't have data that which, which would be needed, but it's the way. Uh, federated model, model had more than 65,000 3D models uh, we prepared more than 2,500 2, wheels for coordination through the complete design cycle. Uh, uh, if you are looking at the 4D beam, this is a time schedule which had 1,592 activities just to create 4D model. Uh, and on the at, at the end, we created more than five hours of video material, uh, which was basically just for the showing on the coordinations or for video support, or f uh, not only for 4D, but also for just to look at the model. Uh, I can say that this is this was really pro project that that took us almost year and a half, uh, a lot of energy and everything to the complete team uh, from, I would say, not, not only from designing side, but also from engineer and client. So, but uh, at the end, I think that we all learned a lot and uh, uh, I hope that this project will be really good information for construction phase, which will follow, I think, in the end of this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's good to see good uh, Slovenian engineering work. And if there are any questions, please go ahead. Uh, I'm sure there are many interesting things to ask and discuss. Uh, in the presentation that uh, Mark Holman gave, uh, he emphasized the importance of CDE. You confirmed as well, as well as the development of good data models. Mm -hmm. I saw LED, how useful was LED in the process? Uh, what I realize in practice is that it is something that confuses people. So if they don't know what they actually need, they say they need LED of that. And they don't have a clear idea why the model will be useful. What is your opinion? <coughs> actually, it's, it's like that for infrastructure for infrastructure models, there is no LOD <laughs> standards. Well, you uh, had it on the... You ha yeah, I, uh, we had to cr create it for our own project. Mm. That, but we were using uh, the existing standards and compare it. But it's like that. Softwares for architecture or I would say for vertical buildings are really more developed than softwares for horizontal buildings, for roads and so. And the problem is that it's so harder to, uh, to, to, to achieve that kind of mm. detail, which is normal for vertical buildings. And, uh, but we used a lot of standards for vertical buildings. And I think mm. that that is part that we need to work on. Uh, to cur and did, did they, uh, these standards stem from the information needs that you actually knew that they are needed or from the existing standards and uh, how to it was halfway <laughs> it okay. was halfway some part is of course because it's standard for mm -hmm. i don't know for concrete it's the same but in some part it's because of the, the knowledge that we have uh, what will be needed and the proportion between the half geometry half. 
uh, that can be perceived and uh, metadata that also includes geometrical data. What was the effort uh, allocated to these two? Okay, if, if we can say that the LOD 350, it's, it's, it should have precise ge ge geometry, if we say that. Okay. Geome geometry on in this project is really precise. We don't have problems with that. <laughs> but How about metadata? We can talk about that. Okay. <laughs> because a lot of metadata is put it on, the model, on the model by hand. Not okay. about geometry and not about material, but everything else or a lot of that it's of course uh, by hand. Thank you very much. Any other question? We must catch up. Okay, one short question then. The break. Last presentation, please. Uh, we have one more. Congratulations for your exposition. Uh, please, um, who was on charge of the, the business ex execution, beam execution plan? Because there was many actors. Who was on charge? Was the construction company, a consultant company? Uh, me. <laughs> so yeah, uh, design company. Uh, the complete uh, writing of the beam execution plan was on our side, but it was uh, uh, checked or revised from the engineers. So it was, I would say, it was combined words, work. We had a proposition and the engineer had uh, opinion. <laughs> on the end, it was uh, combined work. 